Well, welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. Today we're talking about selling from the stage and scaling your business. And we have Mark Granger here with us. Welcome, Mark. Well, thank you for having me, Jane. I don't know if you remember this, but the very first time I met you was in 2001 at the National Speakers Association Conference. I was really excited because that was the first one I got to go to and I had just qualified to become a member and you were the standout for me at that at that, um, at that convention. You were the one I remembered, your expertise, and I've always been looking forward to when we could collaborate. Oh, nice. Uh, what city was that in 2001? Oh boy, now you're testing me. I have no <laughs> idea, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I sure. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, okay. Well, good times. I'm glad that um, I'm glad that it was helpful to you and that <clears throat> that we got to collaborate today. Talk about uh, your business model as you have it right now. You work alongside your wife. Talk a little bit about what who who you're serving and what you're helping them with fantastic so my wife and i are the co-founders of big impact hq we've had the luxury of having over three thousand women uh some men attend our our live event big impact experience that's okay. getting transitioned into women disrupt and uh, we've had over 600 women go through what we call our Speak Your Path to Cash program. And they've gone on to generate over $72 million in their own businesses using this program. Wow. And I think what it really comes down to is we really are, what we see is once you're able to have the gift of gab from the stage and you know how to communicate effectively from the stage and you're using all the tools, the power of the pause and your, you know, your facial expressions, your vocal variety, you really have, uh, you've attained a, a level of proficiency that few speakers do. Yeah. And you're able to get an audience to buy in to your concept or what it is you want them to walk away with. And that's a very similar skill set to a business model that allows you to literally triple, maybe even 10x your income as a speaker, where you can offer from the stage a solution to the problem that you solve. And when you look at it from that way, there's several different business models that really help uh, really help you be able to speak more, work less, uh, generate wealth with less effort. And that's what we're all about. Okay. And I like that you put in your bio um, that your company is based on conscious capitalism. Tell right. everybody right. what that means to you. Oh, fantastic. So I've had the luxury of going through the certification with ConsciousCapitalism.org. This was created by John Mackey of Whole Foods and several other CEOs that really had a vision of a different way of doing business. And fundamentally, business has been all about, we're talking corporate business, and then it trickles down to the small business mindset that everything that matters is the bottom line. So decisions are being made uh, that sometimes harm the planet, harm people, harm minorities or, or things of that nature, because the decisions for the bottom line are being made at, at the cost of the stakeholders. So conscious capitalism is really looking at where business is going. People are really clear that they don't want to be a part of a world where greed is the bottom line. And they're starting to see that business is starting to turn into this wonderful organization and entity that can serve the planet and serve people. And so that's what my wife and I are committed to is giving voices to those, those women and those experts that know that they can make a difference on the planet. That's so cool. I'm trying to rack my brain and remember what the guy from Patagonia did just did. What, what did oh, he, he just, I think he just gave away like all of his billions. He's like basically saying, I'm going to take all my billions of dollars and give them away. I don't know the particulars to that, but yeah. yeah you know. I, it was just ringing my brain. But that's, but that's an, that's an example. You know, he's yeah. got more than he can spend. He's set right. for life. Yes. And now he's using his money for something other than just more. All right. So let's talk about kind of preparing yourself. What is the biggest challenge that a speaker may have uh, building a seven figure business? Well, I think you wanna look at it in a couple of ways. There's two, there's two fundamental models. There's the keynote model, which says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell my time and my expertise for, for money. So I'm gonna take a stage and I'm gonna get a fee, okay? That's, that's becoming more trade. and more, that's right. Time for money. That's right. And so th that's becoming more and more challenging because when you look at what promoters, these are the people that are hiring speakers, what they're doing is they're trying to make money and they've got to get an audience. Yeah. 
And so a lot of your key- keynoters are going to be more celebrity driven to help drive the souls and seats. So if you don't have celebrity behind you, you've got to create a reason to get paid five, 10, $15,000 for a keynote. And there are more speakers now. I, I'm sure you're seeing it like crazy, Jane, more speakers now than ever yeah. that are vying for those smaller and smaller keynote spots that actually pay. So even if you're getting paid 10 grand as a speaker, to make a million dollars, you would have to speak a hundred times, yeah. right? Which is like, that's twice a week. You, it's just physically impossible, right? So then there's the speak to sell model. And this is really what my wife and I are experts at and what we've done for years. And that's really from the stage being able to offer a solution for a back end program. Usually that's some kind of coaching. It could even be some kind of, of, um, package. It could be a SaaS, anything that you can do to help someone's life. You can package it, give them an opportunity to go deeper than what you can do in a 90 minute keynote to really offer them transformation. And those packages can go anywhere from a few hundred dollars to 25, 30, $40,000, uh, bid depending on how deep your solution is to the problem you solve. Okay. I have a bunch of questions. Great. <laughs> Number one, are you getting paid on the front end? and on the back end? It depends. It can be both, which is ideal. Right. Usually it's usually it's not, at least when you're first starting. Um, one of the things like, here's what I want you to understand. When you've got the back end figured out, then there's a whole nother model where you can get on bigger and better stages in what's known as pay to play. Yeah. Meaning you're, there's a sponsorship where you can actually spend money to get stage time and make an offer from that stage. And the, the key with that is that a lot of, I think most people have been to kind of a pitch fest where you go and every speaker is making an offer yeah. and that can be a problem. And one of the things that we really are working with our speakers is how to, how to make an offer that people are longing for. There's been times where I, Jane, where I've been in front of a speaker and they painted a picture so perfect of the problem that I was going through. And I'm like, I know they can help me solve this problem. And they go off the stage and don't give me a next step or an opportunity to get that problem solved. So when you really have a model that shows you how to create your, your, your speaking content, meaning what you're saying from the stage, Mm -hmm. all of it is designed to give your audience an experience so that if they're your ideal client, it only makes sense that they take the next step with you. Okay. So, uh, next question, do you need to get permission from the paycheck writer to make an offer from the platform? Always, always, always. You know, I think uh, when I was just doing a short little video telling my community about this, this talk I was doing with you and I was saying, you know, I spent some time to prepare, you know, I updated my Zoom, I checked my microphones and it's out of respect for the person who's inviting you to speak to their community. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them can be a little sales resistant. And they're thinking, because there are, there are speakers out there that they don't really care what people think they're there to sell. And that's getting far and far few between because you're not asked to come back. I think the biggest thing is you, you get clear of what you can and cannot offer. And a lot of what we teach people to do is to offer a free gift. So if there is an issue to where like, no, you can't make a paid offer from the stage, like, well, would it be okay if I make an offer for a free gift? And oftentimes that offer can be not just an opt-in, it could literally be a a strategy session or sales conversation where you're giving somebody, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of your time to see if they need what you do. And when you give this speech correctly, you've shortened the sales cycle. Yes. So like here you have someone who's the ideal client. They've watched you talk. They're ready to talk about, all right, how much does it cost? What's it look like? Where if you were pursuing them online through the typical channels, you might have a six month sales cycle that's broken down into 30 minutes of stage time and then a conversation. This brings warm people to your door. That's right. <clears throat> During the presentation, okay, I want to go somewhere else first. Let's come back to that because I want to talk about mindset a little bit here because in order, people have an ick feeling the minute we talk about selling from the stage, they're, they're going to be resistant to this. And I get it because you're, if you're getting paid to speak, you want to be really careful with this. Um, 
how do you get over your own any kind of resistance? Like, how do you help coach your right. clients over any fear that they may have of doing this? Excellent. Well, there, there's two aspects around that. There's the actual fear and reluctance of selling. Okay, we call that sales shit. We all have it. And it and it and it follows you through your career. You know, you have a hard time when you're asking for two thousand and then it follows you when you're asking for twenty thousand. Yeah. And then it follows you when you're asking for more and more people. So there's just that sense alone, which takes some inner game stuff, a lot of uh, understanding how to coach people, ask right questions, help them process their feelings is really important. The other aspect is really, maybe too, right? that's where I was going to go next. The other case is that when, when a speaker comes to us, we have you spend a significant amount of time having a conversation of what we call avatar interviews. So you take your ideal client and you're getting clear of their pain and you're building your entire business to solve a problem. So every piece of content, everything that is in your signature talk, the product that you create, it is all designed to solve a problem that they are not getting solved. And when you can see how effectively you solve that problem, you're hungry to get it into their, into, into their, uh, into their world, even if they're resistance to sales, because a lot of their resistance to sales isn't about you. It's about all the sales experiences they've had with car salesmen and, and uh, you know, uh, timeshares prior to you. So we all feel that. I remember, this is a great story. Um, my background is in radio advertising. So I, I had been working with uh, some of the biggest brands in the world as a branding, as a branding strategist in radio. And I was doing a lot of authentic selling. And I walked into the grocery store and there were these cute, two of these cute little girls, probably eight years old, selling Girl Scout cookies. And they're like, you want to buy my Girl Scout cookies? And I'm like, no. And I walked into the store and I'm like, oh my God, I was so harsh to this little girl yeah. and she's just trying to sell her cookies. And I realized that had nothing to do with her. It was just me not wanting to be sold. And so I went back out there and bought some cookies and realized that it had nothing to do with her message. Yeah. It was all the stuff that I brought to the state, brought to, to, to the, the situation. Table. People want to buy. Yeah. And I remember Barb Schwartz saying about, this was more about selling product. You know, if people like what it is that you're saying, they want to take a piece of you home with them. They Absolutely. want to go to the next step and know more. And I think that that's uh, something that you need to be aware of and you need to be very clear on your value. Okay, so back to the speech itself, we call it seed planting. Okay. Or seed planting for whatever else you want to sell. You Correct. have to sell your lead magnet. First, yep. you have to sell it. You have, can't just say, you know, scan the QR code and you're going to get right. something for free. No, 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 no. You have to tell them why they need this thing That's for right. free. But also, how are you? So give me an example of somebody who's selling something at the back end of a presentation, one of your clients. Well, a lot of, uh, you know, so like I would say, I'm going to think of Amy and Ellie right now. These are some... Okay really on fire millennials. They teach all around women dropping into their femininity. They have a program called Desire on Fire. Okay. And they came to us because they were doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. They have a knack for speaking. And um, so we st one of the things that we told them, showed them that part of a seven-figure speaker model is having your own events. And I think that all speakers should be looking at how am I creating my own stage, building my own community. If you're not thinking that way as a speaker, then you're not thinking the way you need to think when you're speaking on stage to create a community and build a movement. So you really need to be looking at, okay, what am I bringing people into as an entire business model, as a movement, and as a community? Okay. And that, that I think is really, really important. So with Amy and Ellie, uh, what a lot of what they do is they will create speaking gigs. They have speaking gigs. They also will do like an online virtual speaking gigs or a, a challenge. And their main offer is to their event. Okay. okay. Because it's what is known as an enrollment event. Okay. Right. So when you do an enrollment event, oftentimes what you'll do is you need clients now. And then that enrollment event, clients can become your client after that enrollment event. So oftentimes your offer may be a low priced bundle that includes a ticket to your event, a strategy session, and something else of value. Maybe it's a video series or something that gives them that adds on to whatever presentation you're offering. So now you've built in 
a whole ability to build a relationship with this person mm -hmm. after they've heard you speak from the stage with a small investment uh, of them from them. They get time, they get attention because as a speaker, you have as a speaker with this model, you have to sell them on your message before you can sell them on your solution. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm just going to say that we understand that this may not be a model that's for everybody, right? Correct. Some people are just going to be like, yep, yeah, nope, don't want to do any of that. <laughs> right. In fact, right. just hearing it makes me want to go have a nap, um, <laughs> and, which is fine. It's Absolutely. not going to be for everyone. For everyone. If you have been thinking, though, hey, I'd really like to build community. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I'm doing an online course and then maybe I'm going to have a live event and blah, blah, blah. If that's for you, then I think a lot of these ideas. So how do you seed plant throughout your presentation for, say, a live event? Are you talking about stories about people who came to your live event last right. year and excelled? All of that can be things, and it could be as simple as so. I'm going to go over the three-step model on how to how to how to convert your audience. Okay. We go really deep into this in our three-day event, Women Disrupt. This is where we actually do speaker skill drills. You get a chance to connect with other six and seven-figure business women. But right now, I can give you the basis of that model. Okay, three points. So there was an example of what I just did right there as a seed. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, and see, Jane didn't even he didn't even recognize it. Now. Right. Okay. I got it. All right. That's really cool. So, um, talk I also think, I think it's also ahead. important, Jane, for, for people to understand that the way Shannon and I are working right now is we have built our business to attract only a certain person. And this is what I want your speakers to get. Okay. Be just as clear of who your talk is not for. Yes and who should not listen to what you have to say and who should not invest in what you do yes. and have a, have a barrier to entry that keeps those people out of your community, not as a way of being mean or, or, or showing favorites, but having clarity of who you're meant to serve in the world. Yeah. It saves everybody time. It does. And you know, so, so for, a, you know, when you're, when you are bringing the wrong people into your world, you're not in your best and they're not at their best. And so a great marketing, this is about marketing. This is about, this is coming from a CEO to that speaker. Who's like, you know what? I have a message that's going to touch lives. Marianne Williamson says, if you can know how to touch a heart, you know how to change the world. Mm. And so having a business model where the intention is I'm going to disrupt my industry so that I attract the ideal person to what I do and the ability and willingness to take a stand in that is going to be the most marketable thing moving forward for women speakers. Mm. And, and the way to look at that is that you start to think about money. You are your number one asset. Okay. So in your business, as a speaker, you are the number one thing that matters. So, so making yourself better, overcoming your fears, getting dialed into the, the precise words, phrases, and the things that you do to personify your brand and be a walking, uh, be a walking example of your message. This allows you to attract wherever you go, like a magnet, the people that are meant to be associated with you. And so because you're your number one asset, your business becomes your number one investment. And when you do this correctly, now you have a business that's generating enough revenue at the end of the year that you're funding retirement and you have money left over to invest in other things like other businesses. My wife and I, we want to invest in women owned businesses and to be able to help them excel and give them a voice. So here's an example of me as a speaker communicating from my heart who we desire to work with and who we can help kick ass with. Right. That right there is a form of a seed to your audience, letting them know what we stand for in the world. And that's what I think most speakers are not doing. They're not taking a real stand for who they are. They're afraid that, oh, if I leave these people out, I won't get enough opportunity. I got to create something for everyone. And in a world where, in a world, uh, in a world where everyone is, where there's more speakers and more experts and more messengers at the flick of a switch and a video who may not have the years of wisdom and heartbreak and experience that you bring to the table, you've got to be able to not cast a wide net, but cast a net very specifically for the people you serve in the problem you solve. 
you know, you've been through, I used to work in a radio station, so I understand this. You've been through the ultimate training, capturing people in 30 seconds. That's right. Is very, very difficult. And so <laughs> you are now transferring that knowledge so that helping people. Now, how did you, how did you land on women being your people? That's a great question. Um, so it started off with, it started off with, um, as when I was in radio, I was working with some of the biggest brands in the world, Harley Davidson, Aflac, Marriott International, and they weren't giving me the opera. I didn't have as much opportunity to do the strategic branding that I loved and was really good at. So I just started looking at who was coming to me and I was helping a lot of business women, business owners become the voice of their message. So they knew they didn't really know how to market. They might have a sense of marketing, but they did know, did not know or understand the power of message. And so that was just kind of a natural thing that happened to me. And then I met my wife and we started working together. And we, that's when we started focusing on speakers. Mm -hmm. And after about four years, we took a step back from the business. 91% of our clients were women over 40. And all of our top performers were women over 40. Mm -hmm. And so at that point in time, we just were really feeling called to have our business really stand for women's empowerment and giving women a voice because you have a platform on the stage that changes lives. And when you are, when you take that message and you shape it and you articulate it and you make it potent and powerful, you become a leader that's changing society with your words. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that, you know, basically you're a magnet standing on stage and not everybody is going to get come up and be stuck to you that's right but, you know maybe like maybe back in whatever year you said it was 2001 maybe there were 50 people in the room and you were one of the people who stuck to me that's and right here we are a long time later 20 21 years later 21 years later you're still a part of my world and i that's think right. that's really cool what you say either resonates or doesn't resonate and i think maybe this is a male and female thing you need to remember that you aren't necessarily there to have everybody love you to the same degree that's exactly right yeah. and i and i also think that it's it's also it's gotten to the point now where you can't just have a knack for speaking you need to be someone who's developing your message and it's always going and the universe is putting a lot of pressure on the world right now society's changing problems are changing um, the rules are changing politics and communication and technology is putting our lives on hyperspeed mm -hmm. so you are evolving faster as a person as a woman and as a leader as a speaker than we ever have so our message is evolving so about every two or three years, there's really a reinvention and a next level of that message that is coming out that if you don't speak to begins to, you begin to start to just not, you just don't begin to feel something's not working. I'm not attracting the way I used to attract. I'm not as happy with my, I'm not as happy with the work I'm doing. So there's, there's this evolution and there's something underneath that I believe that speakers, speakers are being lifted up to really separate themselves from the noise and be the leaders that are leading in a new earth. Agreed. And uh, it's interesting you say we're under a lot of pressure, but think about what happens with, isn't it coal that turns into diamonds under diamonds. something like that? Like that's right. there's something that's great that can come out of it at the other side. And as we look kind of uncertainly uh, uh, with uncertainty moving forward at what are we facing a recession? Who knows? Uh, we need to be in the process of reinvention so that we can come out of that at the other end, being stronger and more focused and with more oh. clarity than ever before. That's what I think when you come at a recession or whatever, it might be a difficult time ready to serve. And the more clear you get, I just, I love your clarity, Mark, around who your people are. That's not to say that what you're saying won't resonate with a dude who's listening right now. That's right. Okay? That's right. Absolutely. So so just know that this message is actually for everyone, um, everyone listening. Yeah. And I think it's important, Jane, for people to understand that, that, that what you just said is really, to me, what a speaker personifies. So if you look, think about yourself as an audience member of a speaker that inspired you, to me, a speaker's job is to paint a picture of the future that does not yet exist. 
Mm. Right. No matter what your topic on, you're coming in and you're letting that audience, you're building hope and opportunity in the mind and the hearts of that audience. Right. And so you've got to be someone who's doing that work yourself. You've got to be on that path of, okay, what is the vision? What is the circumstances of my life? It's pointing me to something. How do I jump into what it's pointing me on and stand in that so that I can communicate that from a place of integrity and authenticity? Oh, that's beautiful. So, okay, talk about how people should get in touch with you if they would like to learn more about the work. Great. We have a really fun way to do that. One of the things that I think is important for everyone to understand is there are certain types of archetypes that people are uh, and different types of speakers that they are. And so we've identified the speaker blueprints. What was interesting, uh, Jane, is both my wife and I had been dating about four to six months. Mm -hmm. I think we'd even started our business before this when we realized we both had gone to graduate school to become marriage and family therapists. <laughs> and then on top of that, we left graduate school to get into entrepreneurship. And we saw that through coaching and speaking that we had the ability to impact more people on a bigger scale and more powerfully than through that old model. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to develop, it's kind of a personality profile based on the psychologically driven principles of what allows you to build wealth as a speaker through your own type of archetype. So we've got six different speaker blueprints. There's the motivator, there's the orator, there's the storyteller, there is the uh, activist who's gonna make a difference in the world. And then you have the, the uh, professor and the performer. And of these six archetypes, one of them is your strength. If you go to speakerblueprints.com, okay. that's with an S, speakerblueprints.com, take a short little quiz there and you're gonna get a you're gonna get the answer of what speaker blueprint are you? And we encourage you to play to this strength of your blueprint. And then as a speaker who presents each of these six, when you bring their skill sets as a speaker together, like literally the speaking skills of the orator, the storyteller, the motivator, this is when you become a world-class speaker. So okay. having a world-class speaker with a, with a wealth-driven business model allows these speaker blueprints to send you on a trajectory of, of making a big impact. Say the URL again. Speakerblueprints.com. .com. And I want people to notice that when you are offering a lead magnet, you need to sell it just like Mark did. Right. Like he really said, and, and I'm going, ooh, I want to know. Everybody wants to know about themselves, right? right? So any kind of quiz like this is often, I think, very desirable. Um, I think archetypes are really interesting anyway and, and get into all of that. Well, you know, and I, and I want everyone to recognize how Jane responded to that. Okay, that's by design. Yeah. That's not by, that's what I want people to understand. Lean in. Lean in. That's, it's not by, that's what it's not by accident. And so what happens is you go to a, you go to a marketing training and they go, you need a lead magnet. Yeah. And so then you go and you come up with some kind of lead magnet and it's never going to work because it's not tied to your archetype. Mm -hmm. It's not tied to a strategy, which says what is going on in the back end of the transformation that I provide all the way through my signature talk, all the way through my marketing, all the way to my lead magnet. So there's a story that people are stepping into that serves and solves a problem for them. That's really good. And maybe because of your radio background, it's like 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> like you're that's right. feeding the story in little pieces all along. I think that's really cool, Mark. I appreciate you sharing your ideas on how to, uh, you know, and just laying out what the speak to sell model could look like for someone. And I'm hoping that you've planted a, a few ideas for people. Maybe some people will be like, yeah, nope, that's not for me. That's okay too. That's okay. Uh, and for um, the, the non-females who are listening, uh, I think that you're going to probably get a lot from this uh, anyway, because Absolutely. it applies to everybody. It's not it does. Not you know, and, and I think it's also important for people to understand when you're looking at as a speaker who who's, has a business, okay, so you literally have a speaking business. To turn that into a multiple six-figure or seven-figure cash machine, there's two main pinnacles. There's your message and there's your team. Because once you start attracting opportunity, you have you're you're too busy to handle emails and handle phone calls and book your speaking engagements. So you need to start building team. And then there's the strategy of how your message and your team all fit together based on who you are. Mm 
And that's what I want people to see because it's so simple for people to get pulled into hiring a coach or going down a path of making an investment in their business. And, and if you're not clear of, okay, theme, message, and how all this fits together, then you're getting, you're getting pieces of the puzzle that may not work. Okay, good, good, good. Well, I'm excited to uh, talk to your audience at some point about scale. Absolutely. I wrote a book about that and team is definitely a big part of it. And uh, I want to say thank you, Mark, for being on the show today. Oh, really thank you so it. much, Jane. And I want to leave a nice juicy nugget for everyone. Okay. One of the biggest challenges that people have when they're making an offer is you have to remember to create a new problem. So if I'm going to talk to you about the three steps of, uh, of, of using speaking, um, of selling from the stage, okay, and I'm going to give you those three steps. At the end of my talk, I need to review those three steps, yeah. summarize them, and then I need to proclaim to the audience their new problem. And that would sound something like, so I discussed the three steps of being able to sell effectively on stage. And now that you know these steps, you're, you're, you're probably in thinking right now, or you're probably in another problem of like, well, how do I apply these steps? And what do I actually say in step two? So these are the things that I've been able to put together in my webinar. So if you come over to my webinar, then you can get those answers. And so this is the key to really making sure that your offer doesn't just land, doesn't just kind of get floated out there, but there's a real specific reason for people to go from where they're at now to where they go next. So you have to proclaim the new problem that your offer solves. I love that. I love that. Mark Granger, this has been time well spent. Thank you. Thank so you so much, much Jane. For being on the show. And if you're tuning in, we will see you next time. Wealthy speakers. Bye for now. Bye everyone.